we ignite the arc by direct heating. So, just strike an arc by touching cathode and anode, but it is not that straightforward. Okay. So, if you keep on touching it, you will not strike an arc. Okay. So, you need to retract the electrode slowly. So, then you can strike an arc. Okay. So, it is done by thermionic emission because the moment you have a, a short circuiting, so then you will have joule heating triggering the heating of the system. Okay. So, you keep, the, you, you keep the electrode and the OBS material in contact for a very brief time to increase the temperature and then slightly retract. Okay, your electrode. So, what will happen then? You have a interface melted and while you are retracting because of the surface tension, the whatever the molten droplet it forms on the, at, the, at, the, at the surface would start contracting, is not it? So, you have an electrode tape okay, on the base material. So, if it is in touching, so you will start melting here and if you are retracting and then tape, I am just exaggerating, you will have a conical the liquid bridge forming, is not it? Because of the surface tension of the liquid. So, while doing so, what happens then now? You are reducing the cross section significantly. Okay. So, you will have a same amount of E sent and after melting, if you retract it, you create an, a bridge between the electrode tip and the work phase and this liquid now can generate a much higher heat because of these the electric field because the resistivity of liquid in liquid is much much higher than uh, in, in a solid state and that too along the smaller cross section area the, the temperature would be increased significantly and during this process because of the heat superheating of this liquid bridge would also heat the electrode surface leading to thermionic emission. Yes? So, it is very important when you are doing an, uh, uh, direct uh, the ignition by direct heating. So, you make a start circuiting and then slowly retract the electrode to form liquid bridge and during this process you heat up the electrode surface, uh, cathode surface uh, to higher temperature leading to thermionic emission. Okay? And this is uh, commonly used for consumable welding process because in consumable welding process anyway you need to melt the filler and deposit it to the base material. It is not be using it for non-consumable welding process. For example, in gas tension arc welding, it should not ignite the arc by, by short circuiting or direct heating because you would end up melting the tungsten and your weld will be contaminated by the tungsten, is not it? So, you will also change the electrode tip angle because of this direct heating and you will also start contaminating your well metal with, tung uh, with molten tungsten. Okay. So, this direct, direct heating method is commonly used for consumable welding process. Okay. For non-consumable welding process generally you should not be using this. Okay, either you can use the electric breakdown or the one I am going to teach you next slide. Right, it is clear. For a consumer welding process for GMAW or in SMAW or manual metal arc welding like you know it is it is done in uh, uh, in construction sites for example with a simple manual metal arc welding electrode. So, they would not be doing by electric breakdown. That guy would uh, you know would severely get in a uh, electric shock if they are doing in uh, voltage pulses. So, in a manual metal arc welding the most of the time it is done by short circuiting, is not it? Have you seen someone doing it? Okay. So, you would just touch the electrode on the base material leading to joule heating, melting of the interface locally and then when you retract it, you form a liquid bridge leading to a reduction in cross section, increasing resistivity leading to a heating of selected surface and then thermionic emission. So, this is the physics behind the welder touching the electrode to the base material. Yes, it is clear. So, now you understand if someone does it, no, okay, so this guy is igniting the arc by thermionic emission, is not it? Good. 
So, the third method which is very popular which commonly used for arc ignition is by high frequency ignition. So, what we do in this case we just apply a high frequency electric field okay several megahertz and sometimes uh, we also use it but most commonly used is use an high frequency current and uh, when you apply an high frequency current the electron would not reach the anode because it you will also be changing the polarity in most of the cases okay. So, during this process they gain energy obviously, so when the electrons are oscillating so they would also collide with each other and with the gas atoms and then they would gain energy when the energy again equals to E i you would trigger an ionization okay. So, the moment you have uh, the ion, ion triggered the same phenomena like in a, in a, in a uh, voltage breakdown electric breakdown the ions would reach the cathode bombard create secondary electrons and heat up the, uh, the cathode leading to thermionic emission. So, advantage of this method is when you are applying uh, uh, an high frequency ignition you may not need a voltage peak okay. So, only need in high frequency. So, the your the, the, the current values can be oscillating electric field values. So, that the electrons would start oscillating during this process they gain energy if the energy equals to ionization energy you trigger avalanche yes it is clear and this is uh, commonly used high frequency, but there could be some funny incidents uh, when you are using high frequency ignition. So, most of the times when you are doing automated welding process and you have all the servo motors controlling the, the motion of uh, your, uh, your electrodes for example, table is moved okay. These servo motors are very sensitive for high, high frequency uh, um, ignitions because when you apply an high frequency you also generate a very strong magnetic field very brief period during while applying high frequency. So, during this process there will be the electromagnetic inductions leading to jamming of these motors okay. So, in most of the cases in lab uh, students would come and, uh, and tell me the motor is not moving when I ignite the arc okay. Obviously, it will not move because then you have influence of high frequency current onto the servos the controls the electronic signals okay. So, generally that is why we always have some delay when you are doing high frequency ignition from the ignition point to the motion of the table okay. So, if you start moving the motor at the point of ignition then the high frequency the inductions can influence these electric circuits boards okay. And uh, the moment you ignite the arc uh, by high frequency then uh, the, you can change to the conventional whatever frequency uh, or even it is a straight current uh, without any uh, uh, pulsing okay. So, the, the power sources and the modern power sources uh, which are actually used nowadays they are capable of doing high frequency ignition. So, then uh, either you can choose if you look at in our labs all the power sources they have option by direct heating or high frequency ignition you can choose based on that in, uh, in, in a most advanced power sources which we will see in next class they are all microprocessor controlled they have a computer inside okay. So, now if you want to ignite the uh, arc by high frequency ignition you can tell the power source okay I want high frequency ignition. So, it will superimpose an high frequency pulse before the onset of your con conventional waveform. Okay, so, then the, the principle is the same as the the, the previously explained uh, the arc ignition by electric breakdown. The moment the electron gains is energy E i that is it we have job done ok. So, this again the most commonly used uh, for uh, uh, gas junction arc welding GTAW ok. And in old days when the high frequency systems are not available how did they ignite the arc in gas tank arc welding ok. Organ? Not the gas welding. So, generally they use an, an a short circuiting uh, medium. So, 
So for example, you can use a graphite rod, insert it between the tip of tungsten and the base material, okay, so that you also have a circuiting, circuiting. okay, so that is also commonly used uh, or you also have a pilot arc to ignite a main arc like he said, that is also possible, okay, so these three are the common ignition methods, right, it is clear. <coughs> 